Well, welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation. I'm very excited to have with us Mr. Jonathan Norn, who is the business and industrial IT group manager at Rovisys. So welcome, Jonathan. Thank you. Glad to be here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Lo looking forward to this conversation and learning about you. Like I said, you're, you are highly recommended. I'm excited to hear about your personal journey uh, as, as we get into this. So maybe get us started. Tell us a little bit about your background. All right. So so my background's a little unconventional, I yeah. guess, especially to be in the space that I am today. So I started off in college, uh, like many. Um, gra uh, set to graduate and the job market was not looking as hot as I thought it ought to. So I decided to go back and pursue some additional schooling. So I actually applied and was accepted to do um, a master's degree and it was being done in fiber optics. Uh, so it was fiber optic sensors and uh, my, my master's degree program, I, I still love this. I, I, I thought it was, I still think it's really fun. Um, we basically were putting sensors inside of a rail gun so that we could determine what the electromagnetic fields were doing inside uh, a rail gun. And, and for those of you who don't know, a rail gun is a, a gun that basically uses electromagnetic force to uh, propel um, the, the ammunition. Um, and the, one of the, the exciting parts about it is that uh, any little metallic slug can be the ammunition. So instead of tens of thousands of dollars for a missile, it's pennies on the dollar for um, a you know, rail gun yeah. uh, ammunition. So anyway, so I, you know, without getting too far into that, um, I had a lot of fun with that, learned a ton of things uh, learned absolutely nothing about networking. Um, I, I, so, you know, fast forward after completing my thesis, I was job hunting and I was referred to uh, a particular uh, place um, that, you know, where I started my, my professional journey. And um, then, and I was kind of relating my experience and I mentioned Oh, you know that we were doing fiber optic sensors yeah. and and what they heard was fiber optics they keyed in on that fact and they said oh you must do networking and and i you know i had been a i guess a hobbyist networker for many years um you know if you could have seen my college apartments it had way more tech than your average college student um and i was constantly buying and uh, servers and other fun things to just, you know, I think they're fun, right. to just spin them up and do all of these fun things with them, um, you know, with no other purpose than to, you know, see how they worked and to really get down into the nitty gritty. I can't tell you the number of times I've broken uh, Microsoft operating systems, um, both on purpose and accidental. Right. Uh, but, but um you know, so anyway, I I, uh, I was hobby, so I, I just rolled with this. Oh, sure, yeah, I can do networking. Um, and and they they weren't really, you know, the interviewer was not particularly uh, network savvy, and I was able to answer some of the questions. Um, and and I came, so I came in and started in the industrial automation industry, uh, you know, with some networking background. Um, and so I went on from there. I did some, you know, DCS controls uh, um, and some other, you know, uh, really, you know, fun projects, MES projects and whatnot. And it came down to, hey, we need somebody to network all these things together. So they, they asked me to do it. And so, of course, I went out and bought a book on it um, and, and really learned what was going on nice. um, because I really wanted to understand <laughs> You know, I could make it work, but did I understand exactly how it worked at that point? Um, I can honestly tell you I did not. Um, but but I, I fixed it. You know, I figured it out. Um, you know, a lot of self-taught, uh, a lot of really good, uh, you know, reading online, um, some some good uh, mentors in the area who, who taught me a thing or two about networking. Um, so from there, um, you know, I, I guess... You know, I stayed at that company for, for several years, and then I moved over to my current company, Rovisys, um, where uh, I, 
I didn't, it, I won't say it was a similar journey, you know, uh, but we did, we, we might pro, uh, progressed from, you know, doing DCS projects to moving on to networking projects and, and becoming more and more involved in the networking. You know, once I learned it at that original time, you know, that was something that I continued to investigate in and, and, you know, hone my knowledge and skills in until, yeah. you know, eventually we were able to offer this, um, locally as a as a offering from my current company right well man that is that is one impressive journey my friend <laughs> now where did you go it to school fun. at so i went uh, to brigham young university out okay. in uh, utah yep very i cool. did both my undergraduate and master's degree there undergrad and grad there wow that's yep. great but uh, i've yeah. never been to utah about here it's beautiful out there man oh oh it is yeah. it is good stuff good stuff well i mean Hats off, you've, you've been, some great things you've been able to do. You mentioned mentors. Maybe let's go there because you said how, how they were so important to you in your career. Any, any, any advice you give to people about, you know, seeking mentors and then maybe has there been a mentor that really stood out to you in your career? Um, you know, I've had several mentors um, at, over the years I, I, that have kind of taught me little pieces here and there. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I will say, I think one, one of the ones, uh, that stand out to me is, uh, and I'll just go ahead and name drop, uh, yeah. got, got a gentleman by the name of, uh, Russell. Um, he, uh, he, he really kind of helped me grow from being a, a fledgling engineer, relatively, you know, new in the in industrial setting to understanding, a lot of what's important to them and and it, it was through through no you know um well, i was gonna say through a lot of effort on his part to help me really understand you know what the priorities are right. and and frankly i think you know seeking somebody to help you really <laughs> shortcuts a lot of you know the figuring it out yourself um and uh, not to say that there's not value in that. There is tremendous value in doing your own research. Research, excuse right. me. Right. But but having having a mentor really, um, you know, not just from a technical side of things, um, but from a you know soft skill side of things, I think is is extremely helpful in in boosting your uh, your career and you know you as an individual in your, your life growth, mm -hmm. I guess. No, no kidding. I mean, it, for, for the, the, the young engineer in particular, what do they need to be looking for or, or how do you even go about approaching asking someone to be a mentor? I mean, or does it just happen organically? What, what have you seen over through your career? To be honest, I feel like the best mentors happen organically okay. um, because there has to be a, um, there has to be some kind of connection between you and your mentor. Um, you know, the conversations that I found have the most, have had the most impact on me and my career and, and my life in some ways um, have been, you know, just random conversations. It was not something that they sat down and looked at a checklist and said, today, I'm going to tell you about the secrets and ins and outs of health insurance. No, we were we were sitting down and we were chatting and, uh, you know, maybe he got a, a, a bill, a health insurance bill and just started talking. Right. You know, and and I learned a whole bunch of things. Um, and so, you know, when you're looking for a mentor, find somebody that you can talk to, that you feel comfortable talking to. And then the other thing about it is find somebody, find somebody you don't mind spending a lot of time with because, you know, getting getting the the real pearls of wisdom from somebody is not necessarily about being there for a seminar it's it's more about timing being there for the right time to receive what they have to say no doubt that was that was perfect great advice any any other advice for the listeners for someone entering industry like you said you went you went the fiber octet sensor out you ended up in networking so i'm, I'm curious just for in general advice that you would have to to, to just enter the, the industry in general? This is a, a potentially a really fun industry. Um, you, you don't, 
you know, especially coming out of college, right. you don't really grasp the magnitude of this industry. There is, honestly, in the manufacturing industry alone, there's a place for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to find it. Right. Um, so if you have interest in one thing or another, um, you know, keep looking. You will find a place where you fit within the industrial setting. Do you think there are any, you know, perceptions out there about industry that are just wrong, that may be prohibiting people from wanting to come? you know, and, and, and be a part of it because anything you like to, to throw out and just, just knock out the park here? Well, I, you know, sometimes uh, there may be a perception that this is, you know, maybe a less professional, um, yeah. you know, it's, it, it, it doesn't always feel like it's, uh, how do you say it? This, we're not the Amazon and the Googles right. of, of the world. I mean, we, we get down in the dirt, we roll up our sleeves and we make things sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, at the same time, there are still plenty of, of people who are behind the keyboard um, there. You know, you you get to be involved in as much or as little as you want um, in the actual manufacturing side of things. So, you know, if 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 dirt's not your thing, um, there's still a place. Right. Um, so I, I don't know if that that is necessarily a misconception, but I could see people going, oh, well, I don't want to be an industry because it's, you know, maybe not considered as as um, uh, I guess white collar. Right. If you want to say that as as um, as that, maybe some of the I.T. industries. Yeah, it doesn't have that flash. Some people may think, but, you know, at the end of the there day, we go. you know, it does. It makes a big impact. So. It does. And, you know, it, it's fun because I, I can I can say that, you know, I have I, I have I've seen an incredible amount and I've helped a lot of things um, make it from make it to market, make it, yeah. you know, when I when I go in the store and I see a product that that I have personally helped make um uh, that's cool. That's a cool I feeling, mean, man. It, that, it really is. Yeah. I think that's, we need to talk about that more manufacturing because that, that's it for sure. I am, I'm curious, you know, anything in your career, when you look back, any highlights so far, I know you have, uh, you know, a lot, a lot in front of you, but just what you've done so far, what stands out? Um, for me, you know, my, my journey has been uh, rather circumspect, but I will say that making it all the way to, um, you know, the point where I am, where I, I get to talk to people about networks and security, um, you know, for me, that, that has been a, a really big highlight because, you know, right now, um, network security is a hot button topic in the media. Yeah. But it has been a hot button topic prior to it being picked up and will continue to be a hot button topic once it stops being talked about so much, it, you know, That's right. all over the place. Um, and so but being able to bring this discussion and bring this to individual facilities who might think that, you know, that they don't have a path to getting cyber, you know, to cyber security um, has been really fulfilling to me and then been a definite highlight in my career. So let's say it's the end of the day and, and you, you get to share, you know, something great that happened with your, your significant other, you know, what, what happened that day? What, what brings you the most joy in your work? Being able to see the value that I've brought to, to the, uh, you know, to our customers, mm -hmm. um, as well as, you know, from a, I, as a manager, I get to bring, uh, try and bring value to our internal employees. So, so bringing this, the, this, you know, value to both, both sides of the table, um, is, is really what I, you know, I like to talk about when we get home. Um, you know, I got to help this person, I got to help this company, I got to help, you know, this process. And, and really that's, that's what what wakes me up in the morning and has me ready to go is being able to go out and and help people kind of achieve their best that's in this, uh, 
That is great. Now, we're both in, based in North Carolina, so I know you and I will get this. Hopefully, our listeners will, too. We're going we're gonna to head off the main path and go down a dirt road, okay? Let's just talk about you outside of work. So, Okay. Uh, the, the Eco SY uh, loyal fan base know that I'm, I, I'm country at heart, so that's just part of who I am. So, let's talk about you. What do you do for fun? What, what, what's some hobbies you got? <laughs> so... Um... A couple of things, you know, I, I actually, I have a, a young family. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, I love, uh, I love being with them and doing, um, you know, things with them um, and sharing some of my hobbies, which I know is what you're, what you're asking about. Um, so bringing, uh, one of the things that I do a lot of is uh, 3D printing. So oh, cool. I, I really enjoy getting in and tinkering with uh, 3D printers and getting them to print things. Um, and uh, it's part of why I mentioned my kids, because, you know, they, they, as soon as they found out that I could make anything, they, they all, they, each of them wanted something different. Right. Um, and so we, you know, it's been fun to kind of work with them and, and, and see them and see their eyes light up as, as what they envisioned, what they drew on paper, comes to life on a 3d printer. Um, so, so 3d printing is one of my hobbies. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I actually, uh, we live out in the country. And one of the reasons uh, we live where we live is so that I can have a workshop. So I'm, I'm really pleased to have a workshop where I can do some woodworking and uh, electronics tinkering and just kind of have fun. I like building things, um, whether it's software or, or physical or, you know, Yep. whatever it is that's awesome there's some great hobbies there now you you mentioned you have a young family what can you share with us about your family what what do you have going on well so we have uh you know my wife and I, we have four kids um right at the moment uh the oldest is eight just turned eight okay and the youngest is uh gonna turn two in november so um it, it's quite the spread they keep us quite busy Boys or um, girls or mixed there? One girl, the oldest, and three boys. Okay, okay. So, yeah, we have we have quite the handful, and and uh, you know, it's it's just it's a it's a lot of fun to see them growing up and 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 learning, and um, yeah. We also we also have two dogs, um, so we have a. a you know, an older dog. And then, you know, my, my daughter wanted uh, a little, a little dog. So we got her a little dog. It's one of the nice things about living in the country is they can go outside. That's right. That's right. That's right. What, what kind of dogs did you get? Um, so uh, the, the older one's a Labradoodle, um, you know, really smart, uh, doesn't shed as much as a lab. Oh yeah. Uh, it's a smart poodle. And then the second one is a King Cavapoo. Um, okay. And so that one's a, he's a small, she's a small little dog that, that, uh, again, it's not supposed to shed very much, but, uh, you know, it's very enthusiastic about all things. That's it. That's right. Those personalities come out in those little dogs. Yes, they do. <laughs> very good. Yes. Very good. Now, how about things you enjoy for fun from a book standpoint, podcast, you know, maybe YouTube channels. We just like to share with our listeners, you know, it could be professional or, or personal items. Just anything you'd like to share there. Um, so uh, to be honest, uh, from, a, a listening standpoint, I, I listen to, uh, books on tape, okay. um, because I, I found that I don't have as much time to read as I would like. So, you know, I like to listen to the books on tape in the car, yep. um, really makes the trip go quickly. Um, you know, one of my favorite authors, just go ahead and throw this out there is, uh, Brandon Sanderson. Um, okay. he uh, has written a lot of things. Um, and so, you know, it's, a uh, you know, and Isaac Asimov, the kind of the father of science fiction there. Okay. Um, so, you know, those are, those are two of my favorite authors. Um, I just kind of listen to a wide variety of, of things in those genres. Very cool. Very cool. Wouldn't well, that definitely add eco ask why to your listening, you know, your downloads. Absolutely. Now. <laughs> Absolutely. Now. Now we do we we love playing this John. We'll do a lightning round, and we just ask oh, a bunch of random questions. 
Uh, just fire, okay. fire at will. We'll go as fast as we can, and and you know, uh, you can go deep if you want, but we, we'll keep them kind of quick. Okay. So let's we'll start off easy with favorite food. Cheeseburgers. Cheeseburgers. Very simple. Very simple. How about any adult beverage to go with that cheeseburger? Um, not so much. Okay. Uh, uh, we steer clear of those, but uh, you know, a good cheeseburger at, uh, at a cookout. Okay. I've been corrected by my wife many times that a cookout, er, that a barbecue does not have cheeseburgers. That's a cookout. <laughs> she She's from North Carolina, and she's very insistent that a barbecue right. serves barbecue. That has barbecue. How about favorite dessert at the, uh, the cookout? <laughs> um, you know, uh, banana pudding oh. pie. It's, yep. uh, You're speaking my language. You definitely it's are. It's really good. How about, uh, what's your favorite app on your phone? Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm monitoring constantly my 3d printers. So I've got an app that does that. Okay. It's, it's really kind of, it's kind of lame, but it, that, that's what it is. <laughs> All right. How about a, uh, a guilty pleasure you have? You know what? Um, I will say, I like looking at networking things and, and building networks. And so I, I have way more networking equipment at my house than anyone has a right to have. <laughs> very good. Very good. How about uh, favorite sports team? I really can't help you there. Uh, <laughs> I've got my hands full. Got your hands full. I understand that. I understand that. How about the, uh, the, 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 the coolest place you've ever been? Oh, you know, I, so my family is actually from Nicaragua originally. Um, and my, my mother moved to the States when she was a little bit older. And uh, so we have, we have gone down there a lot. And uh, some of the beaches down there are just amazing. Um, some awesome waves for, you know, surfing and, and relaxing and, uh, you know, getting burnt sunburn really bad out there and just having fun very cool very good now last one i think i know the answer uh dogs or cats cats oh no you got me you caught me off guard okay yeah yeah but but we do dogs at our house because my wife is allergic to cats okay so i, I got you i got i did not see that one coming you threw me <laughs> off there yeah that's that's uh that, that's the thing Oh, very so. good. Very good. So this, this has been wonderful. We, we call it Eco Ask Why, Jonathan. We always wrap up with the why. And that, that talks about, you know, what's, what's your personal passion? So if somebody wants to know what your personal why is, what would that be? My personal why? Um, I like learning. I like doing new things. And I like helping other people. Um, I know that sounds a little bit trite, but I love to... I love to grow and to to understand more about what's going on, um, especially when it comes to technology. Technology is a huge passion of mine um, that, that I love exploring and, and learning more about. We're all better off that you're out here. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for sharing your story. For the listeners that want to, to learn more, check out the show notes. There'll be links there to Jonathan as well as to Rovis's to get in, in con, you know, connection with those guys. And this thank you again for just taking the time for sharing your story today on eco ask why of course my pleasure thank you yes sir what a great conversation from rail guns to networking man he covered it all and that was a ton of fun all right now remember we need your war stories submit those on facebook and instagram because we're really trying to build something fun that i think you all will like and if you're loving eco ask why hit that five star rating give us a quick review and remember keep asking why